everybody welcome back to the half of it this week we are talking about our holiday traditions we are talking about our holiday traditions yes and uh both sakura and i celebrate christmas yeah well i'm a really big fan of christmas i know that you are too i love christmas so much christmas is just i mean it's part of the best time of the year it is. It is. I yeah. Mean, a lot of people will fight me on this, but winter has to be one of the best seasons, if not the best season. I love winter. Yeah, the weather's perfect. There's no there's no sweating. You know. <gasps> you're a little more in control of your body temperature. Yes. Um the smell also the smell of snow. The smell of snow, I the mean, presence do, of snow, the aesthetic of snow. Yes, we do also live on the West Coast, so I am fully aware that there's there's not we, a lot of snow. <laughs> we don't get it here. There's not, there's not a lot of it snow It doesn't really here. happen here, unfortunately, but no. we both come from places where you do get a lot of snow. This is the truth, yeah. And so it's almost like... It's almost a tease. <laughs> like, I've yeah. gotten to experience that beautiful, like, waking up Christmas morning to a fresh blanket of snow, and the whole yeah. world has just, like, changed. Like, your backyard and front yard don't look like your yards anymore. It's just, like, a whole new world. Yeah. Here, it's usually rainfall we wake up to on yeah. Um, Christmas. Yeah, we love, like, waking up to just, like, thick, wet drops dropping down from our rain. window. <laughs> windowsills in the morning yeah i grew up in toronto ontario yes where there's always lots and lots of snow and sakura though i was born in vancouver i did spend some time in the okanagan and in the okanagan you definitely get the full the full spread of seasons so we definitely had heavy snowfall in the winter which was lovely yeah i um I have a lot of crazy memories involving snow with the winter time. So even though moving to Vancouver was so great for me for a lot of reasons, because the winters are also much more mild. Than They're they so are mild Toronto, here. Yeah. Um, the winters are too mild. They're too mild for me. They're not. They're for basically my favorite season of the year. Yeah. <laughs> no, I miss like all the memories that I have walking to school on days where it for sure should have been a snow day. But the oh, TDSB would days. never um, yeah. in like knee deep, thigh deep snow. Yes, you had to go uphill both ways. Back in my day. Yeah, 100%. No. Because <laughs> um, even for me in Kelowna, the snow isn't like that bad. Right. So you had like the full East East Coast experience. Yeah, it's the full, uh, it's the full winter experience in Toronto, Ontario. There was uh, one year and I think it was my final Christmas before I actually moved to Vancouver, so probably in 2013, there was one Christmas where there was an ice storm in Toronto, and any of our listeners located in Toronto, you will remember this, um, where the the power was out all across the city for at least a week. Yes. And my house was definitely one of those, and Christmas has always been such a special time in my family's life there's so many traditions that we have and I'm definitely a creature of habit I'm a creature of tradition so those traditions to me especially being I I must have been 17 16 years old um, I wanted nothing more than to recreate those traditions like we had been year after year yeah and this was the year where all of those traditions were put at risk like we it was not going to happen and I was so upset um we didn't have any heat in the house there was no power so my teenage self not being able to charge my phone I used to go like with my mom to work to charge my phone because they had like a backup generator it was outside of Toronto oh my Um, god and I remember it was just terrible, and we would, like, slip and slide down this hill towards my my house, which, which was at the bottom of the hill yeah. at that time, because there were also no snow plows or um, salting trucks out. Right. Um, and I remember it was Christmas Eve, and we were convinced that it just wasn't going to happen for us. And my mom, being a good mom, pa- was packing us up, and she was like, we have to go stay at your cousin's house. There's no way we can stay here to do Christmas there's no heat like you guys are gonna freeze and also how are we gonna cook the turkey this year when there's literally there's no power so what are we gonna do and I'm sitting there crossing my arms and I'm looking out the window very Grinch style 
Okay. You know, like looking down at the Who's. Yes. And all of a sudden, the lights all down the street turned on, including inside of my house. Oh, like all the Christmas lights? All of the Christmas lights Ah! outside in the street. Everyone's lights inside that had been off for at least a week at that point turned on. And suddenly Christmas was saved. It really did feel like a Christmas miracle. Santa was like, honey. <laughs> it, it's happening. <laughs> Christmas is year, happening sweetie. this year. I hear yeah, you. Yeah. We got to do all of those traditions that year. We got to stay home for Christmas. We got to do everything exactly the way that we had always done it. Right. Um, and I'll never, ever forget that. Your mom was like, damn it. I have to kick, <laughs> cook that stupid <laughs> bird. Oh, she was going to cook the bird anyway. It was just going to be in like Ajax. Oh, she was bringing the bird with her, honey. (laughs) Yeah. I paid for this. We are eating this bird. Oh, yeah. Um, When I was growing up, my mom pretty much cooked everything. She did all of the appetizers, all of the entrees. She cooked the turkey. She did it all by herself with her assistant being me. Yes. Of course. Of course. From a very young age. Um. And that was just always how I learned to do things. So it's interesting now being an adult and going to other people's dinners and being introduced to everyone else's traditions. And they're all so beautiful and amazing. Um, But I remember my first year moving out uh, to Vancouver, my first Christmas out, I did things the way that I'd always known to do them. I I cooked everything. (laughs) Especially when you're away from home. You like, you're like, I'm doing these traditions the way that I always do them. Well, I don't know. I like, I had no idea. We were always the host for Christmas. So I, I had never experienced, um, even now, like up until like a couple of years ago, I'd never experienced like a Christmas or Thanksgiving where I wasn't hosting. Right. So I didn't know what other people had done in their traditions for for that and that's always eye-opening and really beautiful is the the true spirit of all of that has to do with exactly that like it's what you do with your family how you spend it with the people that you want to spend that time with yeah definitely not specifically just blood Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. I had like a slightly different experience we were always kind of isolated from my family on the west coast Uh, Most of my family is back east or in Alberta, um, and we rarely had family over for holidays, so our Christmas was always just my immediate family. And so for me, it has really, really good memories because Christmas was always like a happy time in my household, and it was the one time where my family kind of all came together where we're normally kind of um off doing our own things this was the one time of year where we all came together and spent so much time together and had such lovely food and um, exchanged gifts with one another so it's always been a very very special uh time of year for me and even as someone who's lived alone um in my adult life and i haven't really had any kind of like big family christmas in a long time um the season still means so much to me and as soon as christmas lights start going up even as soon as halloween's over i'm like it is christmas time here we go and i love it um, the movies, the songs, everything. I'm just like 100% on board for like anything Christmas you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any, um, did you have any traditions with like Christmas Eve and Christmas day growing up? Um, well, um, in terms of Christmas Eve, that is my older sister's birthday. Wow. So there was never any kind of like Christmas Eve thing that we did on Christmas Eve because mm-hmm. it was, it was birthday time. So um my sister would get to open a few of her Christmas gifts she was always given like a little bit more than us to kind of combine both her birthday and Christmas together so she would open some of them um, on Christmas Eve and then obviously the rest of her Christmas presents the next day um but my parents used to always do this thing where they would only put out a few presents leading up to Christmas. And then literally Christmas night, they would spend all night wrapping all the presents so that in the morning when we woke up, it would be like Santa came. Mm-hmm. So we went to bed with almost nothing under the tree. Then we woke up and there'd just be like so many presents under the tree. Yeah. And I just remember appreci- now looking back, appreciating 
that so much that they put that much effort into the fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. Like so sweet. And just my mom would decorate the tree so beautifully. We had these beautiful stockings, these velvet stockings, and we would always open our stockings first and then hang around and chat for a while and then open up our presents. Um, my dad also having a really, really busy, um, job, um, this was the one time of year that he 100% for sure was going to be there in the morning when we woke up and we'd all be together. Um, so yeah, besides that, um, Christmas dinner in the evening, we kept it pretty chill again, not super religious or anything. So we didn't go to church. Um, but yeah, such a wonderful time of year. Yeah. How about you? Any, um, uh, Christmas Eve traditions? So many. Yeah. Um, I was actually just thinking about this the other night because I was trying to differentiate which of the traditions that I grew up with came from my mom and which were introduced through like my dad's childhood traditions. Right. And maybe it doesn't really matter anyway, but, um, Christmas Eve growing up, we were always allowed to open, uh, one present. And it was always like we would gather around the Christmas tree and we'd be asked to like close our eyes. Um, and then we would just be handed a gift. So we didn't get right. to like choose the gift. Yes. Which never really registered with me until like I was a little bit older. But they'd always hand us a, a gift and we would be so excited. And every year it was a pair of pajamas. Hell yeah. Oh, the and Christmas was, pajamas. Yeah. And it was always like that was not, never something that registered with me. Yeah. Un- until I was like lit- literally probably not until about six or seven years ago. Too late. Too late in the game. But ah. it didn't matter. It, they were always from the Disney store until we outgrew Disney. <gasps> oh, Disney pajamas. Disney pajamas. Oh, my God. And um, so that was always it. And we'd always go immediately change into our Christmas pajamas and uh, crawl back into the living room. And my mom's tradition for Christmas Eve was always watching one of the original versions of A Christmas Carol. It was, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen. We're talking the black and white. Black and white. There are yes. a couple different versions, though, and I apologize for the life of me that I have no idea what the name of the main actor is. But yeah, it was black and white. Yeah. Uh, and we watch it every year, and that's definitely something that I carry on even now. I mean, I carry on all of those traditions for the most part. Yeah. Um, except that we we don't really get like new pajamas anymore. Um, my dad and his partner got us everyone matching onesies a couple years ago so every year we just kind of like we we put on the same onesie which is still really cute uh and take a photo and i think now instead of watching a christmas carol it's just like a christmas movie but if i'm spending it on my own christmas eve i'll make sure that i put on a christmas carol hell yeah christmas morning similar to what you were saying we used to there were no presents under the tree at all. Okay. I'm pretty sure our parents would wait until Christmas Eve to wrap everything. Yeah. Um, and we would come out Christmas morning and it would just be like piles and piles of presents. They would literally leave it barren up to Christmas <laughs> Eve night. Yeah. I mean, the tree would be like decorated, but yeah, like no presents beneath the tree. They're like, are you going to get presents? Are you not? Were you because, good this year? Yeah, well, ah! like, you can <laughs> Kids are so nosy, right? So like, I love that. I could totally see kid Kyoko shaking about shaking the hell out of that present. Out. In present, fact, honey. I have a story about on that related note after. Yeah, but um, yeah. So we would come out, and I used to spend it with my cousins. So it looked like like way more presents than there actually were, which I mean is still like amazing. And it would be separated by kid that they were for. But you would come out, and it would be that picturesque Disney like photo-esque uh, moment where it yeah. was just like piles of presents yeah. underneath the Christmas tree. Did I tell you already about uh, my ruined Christmas Day surprise when I was a young gun? No. All right. I don't remember how old I, I was probably seven years old. Um, and my cousin, who is also my age, convinced me on Christmas Eve to go snooping through the rooms in my grandmother's house mm. to look for presents i see you and he came over to me and went, ashley. oh he mm-hmm. yeah yeah he he mm-hmm. came over to me and he was like ashley ashley and he brought me over to this room and it was dark 
and he like turned on the light and we saw this it looked like a like an animal cage and it had a blanket thrown over it but you could hear that there was something inside of it is that where you were kept when you were naughty (laughs) no (laughs) thankfully not um no but i i unveiled it and there sitting in this little like no this little cage was a little rabbit <gasps> oh a little uh, black rabbit oh and i remember i'm not like a very good secret keeper just for anyone listening i'm a bad secret keeper i'm bad at lying uh i'm not good and that's been the case since as long as i can remember so obviously my little child's brain didn't process that i should not tell the adults oh you were like i'm telling everyone i'm seeing oh yeah i was like oh my god a bunny uh it was kind of like that kylie jenner video oh my god is that a chicken (laughs) but it was Ah! like a it was like a pig (laughs) anyway (laughs) um yeah that was me to the adults the adults were like oh my god my dad like threatened to like return him to santa or something like that and i remember crying and then i, I woke up on christmas to morning santa. he was yeah. still staying within the fantasy um no but then the next morning of course like uh sitting out with the mountain of presents was uh was that that bunny yeah uh, and i called her sarah oh so- ah! <laughs> you called her sarah i called her sarah i with mean h sarah the bunny with an h yeah okay my little bunny Sarah. Yeah, why not? Left little poop pellets all over our apartment. Oh my god. Yeah, and that was my first pet. I love that. Yeah, Christmas associations are great. Yeah, I also love drawing parallels between your life and my life because I 100 percent <laughs> had a rabbit growing up. Oh my god. Yeah. You and I can't. We're not ready to perform the fusion, ha. Huh? Not yet. No, we have to take a couple of our steps. next stage of evolution is just fusing together into one person. <laughs> yeah, we have to go into like the time capsule as per Dragon Ball Z. Oh my god! To perform the fusion, ha. Huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about with like Here Goten go. and like Trunks. One hundred percent. They do that fusion. Yeah, ha! they do, honey. <laughs> yeah. ah! They fuse into one person. I love that. And it doubles their strength. And I mean, we will become the ultimate. Yeah. The is, highest form. Two is better than one. 100%. My Nana, she had made us these massive stockings. And mind you, I haven't seen these stockings since I was literally a child. Yeah. So I, maybe it just seemed really huge to us back then. I do, I know for sure that they were bigger than normal size stockings. Um, but we would like, we would start with a stocking, of course, and, and move on from there. Um, my mom always made it a tradition that we would get a new board game every year Aww. and that we would get a new stuffed animal every year. Ugh. So those were always sitting and waiting on top of our present pile in the morning. We would yeah. spend Christmas Day like playing the board game. Right. What are modern day stocking stuffers, I wonder? Like, I don't know. A USB charger. Oh my god. Uh, like yeah. an extra MacBook charging cable. Like, I don't know. Oh my god. I remember when I hit puberty, um, one of the things that I pulled out of my stocking was a stick of deodorant. So a reed. Yeah. No, I 100% also was so self-conscious about my yeah, body odor. That was a reed. And I straight up like That was not crying. the time or the place to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. And... Yeah, and I hit puberty, like, early, so I was also just, like, not emotionally mature enough to, like... She wanted you to open that up that. in front of your your sister and... Uh, I mean, my she sister... She wanted it to be an experience. I was, when I hit puberty, my sister was too young to understand anything still. We were seven years apart, so... It's like when on the Mindy Project, her friends get her an elliptical trainer. It's like there's a time and a place to give <laughs> certain, oh, yeah, certain gifts where no, you yeah. don't need to do it in a in a publicish setting. Yeah. But yeah, okay, stocking stuffer, lady speed stick. Super fun. We love that. We love being read, read the house down by our parents on yeah. Christmas. I mean, what else, what else are stocking stuffers for? I mean... I mean, I would get like the chocolate orange. Oh, oh my the god! The Terry's chocolate when orange. You whack Terry's chocolate orange. We would get it like um, the milk chocolate Terry's chocolate orange. Um, we would get a book, something small enough that could fit into our stocking. Um, we would get like a pair of socks in there, like really <gasps> big fuzzy winter socks. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and then probably like other types of chocolates. We got like lifesavers. <gasps> lifesavers. Yeah, like the original candy lightsaber. No, that was a Christmas thing. Yeah. 100%. Twiddle, twiddle. twiddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Christmas packaging. Yeah. Yes. And like it was like a book. You like open it. <gasps> Kinder Surprise. The, the book. Kinder Surprise book, too. <sighs> Yeah, the little like mini but I also like used to get like a chubby pop in in my stocking. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember those? No. Oh my god, baby, that was just an Ontario thing. That's so funny. They were like little mini pop bottles and they were shaped like like a pod okay. and they were called chubby. Yeah. Because I guess it was chubby. And it was candy inside or it was made out no, of candy. No, it was pop. It was pop. Like like cola. Okay. <gasps> oh, the little tiny little chubby fat ones. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, ch- yeah. <laughs> the chubby pop bottle. The thing that you just described to me. Yes, yeah. oh my I'm God. on board. I just unlocked a whole chapter of like you your did. memory. I love that for you. Ah! Yeah, and I'm like, so what are kids getting nowadays? Like, mm. like vegan chocolate with like a MacBook. Yeah, dark chocolate. Dark, <laughs> unsweetened dark chocolate. Unsweetened. <laughs> 80% cacao <laughs> grown from the earth 100 fair trade fair trade yeah with their MacBook. not that there's anything wrong with fair trade or dark chocolate by the way we're just saying no we fully support all of that <laughs> it's just yeah it's, just it's going to be a completely different experience kids Ooh, or nowadays like a palette. sorry like a like a makeup palette from like <gasps> from like morphe <laughs> oh my god they get a beauty blender in their oh, stocking all these like 12 year olds out here like doing all these 12 year olds out here level eyeshadow looks. all these 12 year olds out here looking like they're our age yeah i, I can't i don't know i don't want to see the inside of like a wish list for a 14 year old these days no i would be traumatized i don't want to see it i wanted at like the peak of my time i never asked my parents for shit yeah i didn't ask my parents for anything when i was growing up so they they would spoil me therefore but i never asked for anything i remember the only thing i really wanted at a certain age was like a camera so every christmas i would get some form of a camera up until a certain age we thought age. that the director gene was like early honey yeah i i mean 100 percent. that's probably what helped to spark i mean on top of like being allowed to watch movies probably a little too early but um yeah it was i got like a bunch of disposable cameras i have a lot of affinity for disposable cameras um and I had that disposable camera. I'm not sure if anyone else has had this. I tried to like look it up on the internet before and I can't find it. But it was a disposable camera that actually printed out your photo. Not like a Polaroid though. It was, maybe it was a Polaroid disposable camera, like specifically. Um, Yeah, because they kind of have something like that nowadays where it prints out like a little mini photo where it's not on like Polaroid photo. I think they're called cool pics or something. uh, They're really popular amongst the kind of like hipster crowd. Yeah, but isn't that's from though like a permanent camera like that's not a disposable camera. No, it is a permanent camera. You're talking about a disposable camera, honey? disposable camera that used to print out like... It was like, um, you know, when that you go to the mall, wild. you go to the photo booth yeah, and it like prints you out like a strip of photos. So it would, it would do that. You would take like five consecutive photos or something like that. And then it would just, print that's it out. wild. Yeah. Maybe yeah I, I don't remember I don't know, that. Maybe honey. my dad will remember. Yeah. Cause he gave it to me from my memory. Yeah. 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 Uh, Come on. Millennial still using film. Oh my God. We're yeah. still at that era where we used film when we were younger. Yes. Yes. And yeah, that was kind of it. I, I've like helped my mom cook Christmas dinner for mm-hmm. as long as I can remember. Definitely um, before I turned 10, I was still doing that with her. I started doing that. Um, and she always had a very specific recipe to follow. Uh, and I know that I've since passed that on to any friends that I've spent uh, Thanksgiving with or Christmas with because it's the same recipe for Christmas and Thanksgiving yeah um to cook a delicious turkey and now my my dad's partner does the turkey which is all all the same to me because it's a lot of work it's it a is a lot of work to do all by yourself totally so I forget sometimes that I grew up in the earlier years of my life with some of the Ukrainian side of my family and we would do a separate like Christmas event for them and a yeah. separate Christmas event with my other with my Japanese family. Um, and I know that a tradition for them was always uh, my grandma Betty, 
was my Ukrainian grandmother, yeah. um, would always hand make pierogies. Oh, hell yeah. And that was something that she passed on to my mother. That was more specific to the Ukrainian side of my family. Uh, my Obasan and Ojichan, they... I don't think there were any like specific traditions. I know that Christmas was really big with them too. Uh, I've seen so many like home videos of oh. uh, their Christmases together. Yeah, and they were so smart with their money, and they owned a couple different businesses. Yeah. That I think is what made them able to have such uh, luxurious Christmases together right. growing up. Um, but obviously, they worked really hard for that. And uh, looking back on the videos and all of it, it's really cute to watch it all happening because especially once you know like what your uh, great-grandparents have gone through through the war and whatever um but yeah when i was growing up with them anyone who lives in ontario you'll know what the mandarin is Mm -hmm. it's this um (laughs) it's like a mixed cuisine buffet that's supposed to be like Chinese food, but there's also um, there's also sushi and ah! there's also pizza, and you can get it delivered to your house. And that was always like their thing, which is hilarious, is they'd always order from the Mandarin, and my Oji san would always mm-hmm. make green tea. That was his job, yeah, um, his only job. <laughs> and my grandmother would set the table, uh, and we would all just kind of sit there and have tea and talk. Yeah. And I think the elders would sit around the table and gamble for a little bit afterwards. Oh, honey. The gambling. Yep. Um, and I remember in the living room of their house, there were two, there was the, like the front window and then there was like a window at the back in like the family room that uh, looked out onto the, the front porch and the back porch. Mm-hmm. And so they had so many different things. And I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. I would used to go to those windowsills and help my grandmother set up their mini christmas trees as far as i remember they didn't have like a larger christmas tree but they probably got rid of that after their kids grew up and had kids right yeah i'm just remembering something that we did as a christmas tradition um in terms of like giving out presents i don't know if you've seen the movie a christmas story um i don't think so so it's an 80s it's an 80s um a live action Christmas movie um, about this little boy who desperately wants a BB gun. Mm. And he's ba- the movie's basically him trying to um, persuade his parents as subtly as possible to buy him this, uh, this BB gun. But um, the way that they do their presents Christmas morning is someone is chosen to be Santa. Mm. And that person goes and chooses gifts for people and hands out all the gifts. So that's actually something that we used to play um, Christmas. So each year it would like rotate and someone would be in charge of choosing like which ones you would open first. So that was a cute little, a cute little tradition. That is adorable. Yeah, I loved it. I love stuff like that, um, passing on traditions like that. It's really lovely to share. Once you like become an adult and you start sharing all of your traditions for your different family events with each other, whether that's like a a dish for those events yeah, or like gift giving. Totally. Um, And I say events because I know that not everybody celebrates Christmas and there are different holidays that happen around this time of year. Definitely. Another tradition with Christmas was the tree decorating. Ugh. Tree decoration. Yes. Um, We definitely make that into an event here. Yeah. Sakura helped me decorate my Christmas tree this year. Because I don't really have one. I have a condo tree. It is very tiny and it is not exciting. Where Kyoko has one that's essentially touching her ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. My Christmas tree is 100% touching. It's, it's just about just... To There's touch definitely the no topper on the top of the tree because there is not room. As we sit in my living room and stare at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I when I moved out to Vancouver on my own... My, I moved in with my dad for a little bit. My dad was very much, is actually very much a minimalist. He had almost no furniture. He literally had the bare necessities. And I was like, uh uh-uh, no, sis, this is not what's happening. He just Mary condoed the shit out of his place. He no, was like, like, he's never no, had nothing sparking in joy in this place. Like, that's how he lives his world. Like, there ah! are no possessions anywhere, they're all in storage. So I was like, nah, uh, we're going to go and get a tree. And, um, 
we decided to go and get a fake tree because real trees we lived in an apartment it was just a bit of a hassle i forced him into it he wasn't gonna do it um but anyway when i moved out on my own i got to keep that tree because again he is a minimalist his partner now forces him to to go and cut down a tree every year so i love that i love that and your sister your like your youngest sister is so young you gotta do the full fantasy yeah no i love that for her truly Um, But yeah, now I get this like seven foot tree in my apartment and I get to do the full experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I hate putting on the lights. Which I think is fairly common. Yeah, but I think that's the least favorite part. Um, For me, I quite enjoy it. Yeah. I do quite enjoy it. I have to accept that the person who the tree belongs to will probably alter the way that the lights have gone up. Which is how it goes. I I am like a little bit more particular about my my Christmas tree stuff. I have a lot of Christmas trees, Christmas tree do's and don'ts, if you will. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, me and Kyoko, before we did her tree the week previous, we had done a tree at our friend's house Mm -hmm. and they just straight up looked us dead in the eyes and were like, it doesn't matter where you put the ornaments because we will be rearranging them. Yeah. And that's just something you need to accept. And we were like, yeah, hell yeah. Hell to the yeah. Here we go. That means I'm going to go crazy. (laughs) And crazy we went. And crazy we went. Yeah. Um, obviously lights go on first, um, and then we put on some of the bigger baubles, uh, that are just, uh, my, my tree scheme is, uh, teal blue and silver and with a little hint of pink. We love a tree scheme. Um, yes. And then we put on the special ornaments. My tree is mostly, um, skulls. Yeah. So it's heavily skull (laughs) ornaments. Um, I would say red, silver, and um gold are probably um the main features on my tree but most of my ornaments are skulls do you have any like christmas tree don'ts christmas tree don'ts Mm -hmm. um not necessarily it's funny whenever christmas comes around you always have conversations with people around you about like what you find acceptable and what other mm-hmm. people don't. I don't have any don'ts. If you want a, a pure white Christmas tree with neon pink lights, I'm on board. If you want to tinsel the house down, I'm on board. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't really have any don'ts. That's a really cool way to look at it, actually. I'm just, yeah, I'm just very excited to be a part of the, the holiday the season. season. And so, yeah, anything I can get, I'll just... <laughs> Yeah. No, I love that for you. Because, yeah, I'm very judgmental about the color Ah! of Christmas tree lights. But once again, like, everybody thinks that they have the best Christmas tree. Which they do. And they absolutely do. 100% they do. Yeah. Whatever makes you feel merry and bright is the best Christmas tree for you. And it's so interesting walking around because everybody obviously is going to put their tree in a location where you can see it from the sidewalk, from the street. So you really do get to see everyone's particular taste. Some trees are like the densest trees I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know how they got the ornaments onto the tree. Other trees are very sparse, very peanut vibes, Mm. um, which I think is absolutely adorable. I love like a super sparse tree. Yes. Some are tall, some are short. Um, so yeah, it's it's really interesting um, what you um, kind of like want personally out of a tree. I think for me, I would definitely want it like Kyoko's touching the roof and super dense. Mm-hmm. Super dense. Super dense. Yeah, that was, I think, one of the... Uh, the deciding factors and we are choosing our tree was uh, how full is it? How full does it look? Yeah. And who are you choosing your tree with? I was choosing my tree with uh, with my dad. And um, that's always a very interesting experience uh, shopping with uh, Tsukimoto-san. Yeah. Tsukimoto-san's very picky. Mm. I mean... <laughs> oh. Is I he? Mean, ah! I mean... So that... the apple just doesn't, you know... <laughs> The apple does not <laughs> fall very, very far from the tree. I'm starting to see a pattern. Ah, the be... the red string starting to connect. Oh my God, to be fair, he like left everything else like up to me. So how did he feel about your tree being this size? Oh, I mean, I think on some no, he he was like, can it not be smaller? And I was like, no, 
absolutely not i was like it has to be at least six feet tall absolutely not yeah if i can physically touch the top of the tree it is too small yeah and that's funny because i'm very short i'm five foot four uh and i most certainly cannot you are half of this tree (laughs) i am half of this tree i cannot reach the top so i always depend on somebody else taller and taller individual my christmas tree topper on and oh my god my christmas tree topper it's just, you know, chef's kiss. Just absolutely amazing. I'll right? have to post a, a photo on there for you guys. Do like a live tree tour. Um, Christmas movies. Uh, Christmas movies. I think being a millennial, there were a lot of really iconic Christmas movies that came out in like the late, kind of like mid to late 90s, mm-hmm. early thousands. Um, the Home Alone movies. Oh, yes. Um, uh, Jim Carrey's Grinch came out in like 2000. The best one. Um, Elf, I think, was like 2004, something like that. So these killer Christmas movies Iconic. were coming out. So all of those movies are super nostalgic to me, and I watch them every single year, um, usually multiple times. Yeah. Um, what do you think is, besides uh, The Christmas Carol, what do you think is a super iconic Christmas movie that you have to watch? Um. And I, like, almost feel cringy saying this aloud now, especially now that we know more about Tim Allen. But I grew up watching the VHS versions <gasps> of The Santa Claus. The Claus's. Santa Claus. I had that on VHS too, girl. Yeah. they, And I still love them. I, I know that it's kind of... we. I mean, we all knew iffy. about Tim Allen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. But it is, like, for nostalgic purposes, that is a movie that I watched. The first and second one only. The third one can literally just, like, not exist. Um, is that the one with, like, Jack Frost? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that one with, one... like, Martin Short. Yeah. We yeah, don't... No. That one doesn't We don't talk be... about that one. Um, no, 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 no. But the first and second one are still iconic in my heart um i've already watched them both this season i love that i have watched elf uh elf is always a big one elf is so good also the beginning of elf when he's walking through the forest is british columbia british columbia it is vancouver or the surrounding area yeah just saying a lot of them are filmed out here in bc let's be real it's fantastic Mm-hmm. Yeah, those movies and the claymation movies. Let's, let's just oh be the early yeah Rudolph Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer yeah, yeah. Santa Claus is coming to town iconic the little drummer boy yes all of those I still watch every year and I know that they are not from my generation they're not from the millennial generation they're from like our parents and even before that yeah um but I yeah I don't know I always had the VHS set for those growing up so those were just part of the movies that I used to watch growing up and maybe that was just um part of the need from our parent or from my parents to have something that was like more kid friendly right for a while I was growing up but then it became so much more about just being a kid and it was just for nostalgic purposes totally but I watch all of those uh, every year, regardless. We um, actually, the composer of our main theme and our outros, uh, Julian Bowers. Julian. Julian. He uh, he made everybody at work these DVDs two years in a row that had all. Uh, I think the first one was. Uh, I think the first one was a bunch of classic. Christmas films, including uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. And the Red... Uh, <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And in between, it had all these old Christmas-related uh, commercials from the time of those films. <gasps> Honestly, that's something I miss in media yeah. these days. Commercials! Commercials. Yeah, yeah. Like, not you really trying to, like, sell me something. No. But, like, just the Christmas commercials that would come out. Like, the Coca-Cola commercial and, and stuff. And old commercials are so different than uh, what you see now. Totally. So, yeah, he put that together for all of us. And I do, like, put that on for background noise while I'm cleaning or while I'm working on things at home. Because it does feel like I'm back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, sitting in the living room. Totally. Christmas movies movies so that is iconic um i'm a very nostalgic person so i really do like have so many associations with 
uh, everything like that and different Christmas songs. 100%. Yeah. I absolutely love Christmas music. I know there are a lot of people out there, especially people who work in retail, um, who have certain feels about Christmas music. But honestly, I don't care. I don't care who's singing it. I don't care what artist it is. I don't care what song it is i don't care if i've heard it a thousand times if it's christmas i'm 100 percent on board yeah obviously i have my icons um mariah carey um don't come for me michael buble (laughs) i'm sorry i like the buble (laughs) it reminds me of frank sinatra that's fair don't come for me that's fair um but yeah um yeah it doesn't have to be um an original it doesn't have to be uh remixed you can literally just be singing a christmas carol and i'm 100 percent on board yeah you yeah sakura and i walk around and we just sing a bunch of frozen songs like literally all the time yeah i mean we're singing nonstop. yeah this time of year it's definitely more like snowy and like christmas related i mean i don't think that the frozen soundtrack is restricted for us for the christmas definitely not um (laughs) yeah i I wouldn't say that I'm like picky about my Christmas music, but I definitely, um, I don't actually, you know what? That's funny. Cause I don't actually think that I grew up listening to, um, the old crooners Christmas music, right. no, but that Frank is what Sinatra. I, yeah, yeah. Or like Bing Crosby. That is like what I choose to listen to now. Yes. It does for whatever reason, paint that uh, nostalgic picture portrait for me. Yes. Um, even though I'm pretty sure that that's not what we listened to growing up. What I do remember us listening to growing up was, the Boney M Christmas soundtrack. Okay. Have you ever heard it? I have not. Um, it's iconic and you definitely should. Yes. Um, yeah, so we used to have this one CD that we would listen to every single year. Yes. And eventually my mother lost it because... It I mean, happens. Everything just gets lost. Yeah. Like with, uh, yeah. If you're bad at like storing all your Christmas stuff, it just like goes into storage and comes out of storage once a year. It's... It's a lot to keep track of. So we lost it. And also probably for the best because it was so scratched up. Yeah. I mean, when you have two children and you're a single man mom, handling it. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck keeping track of that stuff. So I remember that yeah. we lost it for a long time. But thank God for technology because then it didn't matter whether or not we had the CD. Um, my first year away from home for Christmas, I purchased that CD. I purchased the Boney M CD with the Christmas music for my mother and I mailed it to her and I remember she was so excited because I'm pretty sure she had maybe that was like just something that she didn't think about very often yeah or maybe didn't think of it as being a special tradition the way that I perceived it to be right um but she was so excited and so I think like humbled that I like remembered that Mm -hmm. um but even now that's that's definitely like uh, a necessity out of my Christmas music yeah (laughs) One thing I feel like we're going to miss out on this Christmas being a a COVID Christmas is in Vancouver. We actually have a little, a little festival in the winter in Mm -hmm. the Japanese community. So there's usually um, a Japanese market where Mm -hmm. people sell um, a bunch of um, artisan goods. Um, but yeah. unfortunately, this year, because of COVID, it isn't happening. Yeah, yeah. It was um, it was virtual instead, which was really nice yeah. um, to see that there was still some effort being made in the Japanese-Canadian community to make stuff like that still happen. Um, it's definitely not the same. Uh, I did get to go to the Japanese Christmas market last year in Vancouver. Yeah. And how was it? It was crazy. I'd never been to, again, like all of this stuff is very new to me. I'd never been to an event like that, including Powell Street Festival. I'd only been one time a couple of years ago. Um, and it was just kind of wild to see so many uh, Hapa and Hafu people yeah. in one space appreciating the same culture. Yeah. And uh, I actually, I got to meet so many people who we would just talk about being your experience Japanese Canadian. Yeah. It was so weird. So when I was there, it was, it was kind of crazy because I'm always screaming about mochi and um, Ah! onigiri and 
obviously there was like a food market there too Ugh, and there's always some amazing japanese cafes in vancouver yes um, yes yeah there's this lovely japanese cafe um that i've been going to for years uh and it's called usagi sweets and it's located at oak street and i think like 17th avenue we love our sweets 20 21st 21st avenue oak and 21st usagi sweets and they make these like mochi brownies and they're so delicious anyone who Mm. has not been there in the greater vancouver area you have to go i do think they have limited hours and i'm actually unfortunately not positive as to whether or not they're open during covid right now but they they did have a a table at the japanese christmas festival and i remember i got an entire box for uh, my staff and brought it into work uh, it's where I met my friend Tomo, who runs Dent de Leon Pottery. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll definitely link all of that in our socials. But uh, yeah, Tomo is, uh, she does pottery and she makes some really beautiful uh, candle sconces and the occasional plate and different, like, just like indoor decorations. Yeah, and, we love candles. Uh, I remember I was there looking for a 16 ounce mug for my dad because very he was specific. Very specific. Yeah, That's, it's very specific. Yeah, Papa Sugimo Sugimoto was son is very specific yeah. about the size of his coffee mug, and of course, who makes a 16 ounce coffee? No one makes a 16 ounce coffee mug. I'm telling you right now because mm-hmm. I searched everywhere. No, and I really wanted it to be from a Japanese Canadian artist, and I found a table for Dentaleon pottery. And I emailed her closer to Christmas because they didn't have any mugs. She didn't make them, but I really liked her style. And yeah, she she custom made me four Aww. different mugs with and told me that there was no pressure to buy any of them because she'd never done it before. Yeah, And they were beautiful. I and love that. I gifted one to my dad last year. And I look forward to collaborating with Tomo again in the future. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's looking for anything out there, I don't think that it's in harmful to any artist for you to at least reach out and see um if it's within their interests um yeah. to, to want to work on a project that's new for them like that if it doesn't seem like it's something that they're already into yeah so you were saying that the the festival was still um virtual have yeah. you bought anything from the virtual festival no um so it was back in november i believe that it had gone virtual um, but all of the usual vendors, almost all of them, I should say, uh, were just, it was basically run through a Facebook group mm-hmm. and all of the different vendors would post either a link to like where they could purchase products with a discount code in honor of the, uh, of the market itself or right. would post like photos of their products with uh, an email where you can contact them to to purchase that product and that was really nice to be part of I, w- I just wanted to see what there was going to be i am looking for my own yukata right now my own kimonos yeah and there are always these amazing vendors at those uh, at those fairs that have uh, totally used kimonos um i in particular there was one vendor named blim blim vancouver that's b-l-i-m uh, and they actually sell, they they use old recycled materials, like Very different types cool. of fabric with yes. different prints on them. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily traditional, but super cute. Yeah, definitely not traditional, but I think that that's kind of what their thing is. A lot of their other clothing is very much like for raves. Yeah, it's a little too late in the season to recommend uh, gifts that you can buy for your special people for Christmas, but we can definitely recommend some different places where you can uh, spend your Christmas money. That holiday money. That holiday money. That holiday green. Yes. Yes. Um, I purchased recently, um, the Powell Street Festival is actually selling two different uh, gift boxes. One is called the Matsu box and one is called the Momiji box. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually bought the Momiji box for myself um and i i re-gifted certain parts of it uh in particular i'll be giving my little sister uh jeff chiba stern's new child book okay nori and his delicious dreams to my little sister this christmas yes there was a cutie cat's cotton tote that i gave to one of our friends uh a heart cup cozy 
from Make Merry and uh, Beads Yaw earrings uh, from Beads Yaw. Nice. And they were all really just lovely. And I'm always looking for different ways to support Japanese Canadian artists. So I thought it was really great that the Powell Street Festival decided to put together a couple different gift boxes. Um, I know that right now they're discounted from $70 to $60. Nice. Plus uh, a little bit of shipping. And if you're living in Vancouver, it's just local shipping, so it's not so bad. Um, They are pausing shipments for those right now until January 5th, but they are still taking orders. So if you are looking for um, a way to support some local Japanese Canadian artists, um, especially now that those uh, festivals uh, and markets are closed, definitely go check out Powell Street Festival um, on their website. And they have a Shopify account that has both of those boxes and you can kind of get a bit of a sneak peek as to what uh, will be in each of those boxes, same value, and uh, see what pertains to you. It's going to be interesting how Christmas is going to be for future generations because for us Christmas was all Toys R Us and and toys and you know circling like, items in the flyer right yeah nothing from the Santa. Apple store honey we weren't getting like no. like tech we were not getting like no gift certificates like yeah. two grand devices yeah like yeah true. the the stuff that kids have these days I'm like how is that the actual Christmas experience yeah. Do kids don't play with toys anymore? Yeah, I am very interested to see how Christmas changes over the years and how t- traditions from our time uh, evolve and what they evolve into by the time, like, our younger siblings and our nieces and nephews totally get to be our age. Uh, and by the time that we have children, that'll be so weird. Yeah. So different. Like, can you remember freaking out about Furbies? Yes. When Furbies came out? Yeah. You, the stuff like that doesn't happen in, like, the kid world anymore. No. When was the last time, toy like... Toy releases? Yeah. When was the last time a toy blew up and everyone yeah. was, like, freaking out about it? It's not about that anymore. It's about tech. It's this about, like... Yeah. Well, cheers to the future of uh, a tech Christmas. We love a techie Christmas. Maybe Santa will be a robot. Santa is going to be future? a full AI bot. An AI. <gasps> oh my God. AI Santa. Actually, if anyone has any really cool holiday stories to us, definitely um, send it to us. Send us a DM. Tag us. Use the hashtag the half of it. Definitely. We're always um, going to be looking through those. And um, now knowing how much we love the holidays, we'd love to hear yeah. what all of your traditions are. Because I think... Um... People, you know, you see like a lot of the same things in holiday movies where it gives off the appearance that everybody has the same kind of experience during mm-hmm. the holidays, but everybody has their own, their own unique way of celebrating the holidays and whether that is actually celebrating Christmas or um, what other religious or, or spiritual event that you um partake in this time of year everybody's different so I think it would be really cool if people you know sounded off in our social medias and let the world know how they celebrate Christmas just to show what a diverse season it is and how it doesn't necessarily revolve around Christmas well merry holidays to everyone listening merry holidays and thank you guys so much again for tuning in to another episode of The Half, the of, Half it. of It. Um, we do just want to announce that uh, next week we will be taking our holiday break. We know that we are new to this platform, um, that you guys are just getting to know us. Um, but we do want a chance to be able to give you guys uh, quality content. So we will see you again in 2021. I hope everyone has a safe holiday season. Everyone make sure that they're still following all the rules. Please wear your masks. Wear your masks. Sanitize. Social distance. Wash your hands. Don't touch your eyes. It's a it's a different world we're living in. It's a different Christmas. Yeah. It's not a Barbie world anymore. Oh, my God. <laughs> happy, happy holidays. And happy, happy holidays. New Year to all of our followers. And we will see you in the new year.